Hey there, this is Dr. Ramey, and I'm going to be doing a tutorial on determining the total dilution factor. So, performing serial dilutions and determining the dilution factor and the total dilution factors is an important skill in microbiology, especially as it relates to things like uh, determining the original culture density or OCD, which I will go over in another tutorial. So right now let's just focus on dilution factor from this example of doing a serial dilution. And you need to know that the dilution factor is equivalent to the volume transferred divided by the total volume. So let's look at some examples. So here if we transfer 0.1 mils of this sample here, or of this culture, into a tube that contains 9.9 .9 mils of diluent, then we have a, uh, a total volume here of 10 mils in this tube right here, total volume of 10 mils, and we transferred uh, 0.1 mils. That is equivalent to, so that's, that would be, uh, in that example, uh, that would be 0 0.1 mils over uh, 10 mils. That's equivalent to 1 over 100. So you could say that the dilution factor is 1 to 100. Um, another way to write it would be 1 or 1 over 100. Another way to write it would be 1 to 100. Um, but the, as you're going to find out, a, a better way to write it, at least in this case, would be uh, 10 to the negative 2. So in particular, this um, can be written as 10 to the negative 2. So I'm going to put that right here. Our single dilution factor is 10 to the negative 2. So that means to get from this tube here to this tube here, we've the way we've diluted our sample, our original sample, uh, that's a 10 to the minus 2 dilution. So at that point, since this is only tube number 1, then that would be still the total dilution factor would just be 10 to the minus 2. Okay. Uh, now, let's look at tube number two. I'm going to change my colors for each of these tubes. So what's the dilution factor? Just, just looking at the dilution factor from tube one to tube two, let's start with that. So it's the same, right? It's going to be a 0.1 mil transfer into 9.9 .9 mils. So it's exactly, it's the same dilution factor is, as it was from, from the original sample to tube one, um, which is a 10 to the minus two dilution. Right. However, the total dilution factor in tube number two um, is going to be the um, the addition of both of these, or actually the multiplication of both of these dilution factors. But when you multiply exponents like this, so 10 to the minus 2 times 10 to the minus 2, then you would actually just, the easiest way to do it is just to add the exponents. So 10 minus 10 to the min, uh, minus 2 and 10 to the minus 2, you just add these two exponents here. So minus 2 plus minus 2 is minus 4. And in fact, the total dilution factor in tube number 2 is 10 to the minus 4. So it would be equivalent to this, right? If you wanted to, you're, mul you're actually multiplying these single dilution factors. So you can think of it like this. Um, 1 to 100, or 1 over 100 times 1 over 100. Well, that's equivalent to 1 over uh, 10,000, right? And 1 over 10,000, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. So that's equivalent to 10 to the minus 4, which is what we have. So this is why I recommend um, calculating your dilution factors using an exponent like this, because it makes determining the total dilution factor so much more simple. So let's go ahead and carry that out to tubes number 3 and 4. So let me uh, change colors yet again. So now let's look at what the single dilution factor is from tube 2 to tube 3. In this case, you always have to be very careful and attention to detail of how much is being transferred, so what volume is being transferred, and what volume um, the diluent is. And what, so that would uh, add those together, and that would give you the total volume after the transfer, which in this case, again, is going to be 10 mils. But it's a bit different now because it's 1 over 10. So now the dilution factor would be 1 over 10, right? So 1 mil was transferred. Um, after that transfer to 9 mil of diluent, 
gives us 10 mils total and 1 over 10 is equivalent to 10 to the minus 1. So from tube 2 to tube 3 the dilution factor is 10 to the minus 1 but our total dilution factor in tube number 3 we would need to to add this exponent minus 1 to what we have here. So minus 4 plus minus 1 would give us a total dilution factor of 10 to the minus 5 in tube number 3. So that means that all the way from the original sample to tube number 3 is a dilution factor of 10 to the minus 5. And then finally to do the uh, the very last one from tube 3 to tube 4 here again it's a uh, 1 mils added to uh, 9 mils to give us a total volume of 10 mils so it's another 1 to 10 dilution which is uh, 10 to the minus 1 and then when we add the exponents here and here it gives us a total dilution factor of 10 to the minus 6 so you can see how we, we've calculated the single dilution factors from tube to tube and we've used those to then determine the total dilution factor in each tube and that means that tube number four here um, has the uh, the sample that started here in the uh, uh, the original sample tube all the way to tube number four has a total dilution factor of 10 to the minus 6. And so you need to know those total dilution factors um, in each tube in order to determine uh, things like original culture density. Um, so that um, wraps up this particular uh, tutorial, but I will be making another one where um, we also go on to calculate the OCD or the original culture density. So I'll see you in that tutorial.